Hello, everybody. I'm back. It's Menopause Taylor bringing you the state of menopause in the world today. And I am all geared up to give you yet another useful podcast tutorial on menopause. <laughs> but today's lesson isn't only about menopause. It's about menopause and something else. It's about the differences and similarities between menopause and thyroid disease. Go figure, huh? You see, it just so happens that a lot of women have thyroid disease around the time of menopause. And because of that, I think it's very, very, very important to address them together as well as separately so that you see how one can affect the other. It just so happens that there's a whole lot of overlap in the symptoms of menopause and thyroid disease. And the end result is a lot of confusion for many, many women, which creates lots and lots of problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to distinguish and clarify the two and hopefully dispel some of the confusion for you. Now, if you have any kind of thyroid problem, or if you will ever deal with menopause, or if you even have a thyroid, you need to listen to this podcast. <laughs> Actually, every woman needs to hear this because you never know what you'll have to deal with. And when you know things in advance, you're always better off. So you know how organized I am. <laughs> so instead of jumping right into this, I'm going to start by giving you a primer on the thyroid gland. <laughs> sort of. Your thyroid gland is a butterfly-shaped gland, and it's located right at the base of your neck, right about where the Adam's apple is. And your thyroid gland functions to control your metabolism. So your thyroid is supposed to be functioning in a steady, predictable manner all your life. It's steady and predictable. However, Thyroid disease exists whenever your thyroid overfunctions or underfunctions. Overfunctioning of your thyroid is called hyperthyroidism. Hyper, H Y P E R, hyper, over. And it's characterized by a thyroid gland that's too large. Underfunctioning of your thyroid is called hypothyroidism, H Y P O. And it's characterized by a thyroid gland that is too small. Pretty easy, right? Now, the reason that thyroid disease can be confused with menopause is because the symptoms of hyper or hypothyroidism are exactly the same as some of the symptoms of menopause. <laughs> For example, the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, which is where your thyroid is over-functioning, include absence of your periods, sweating or heat intolerance, insomnia, irritability and mood swings, anxiety and nervousness. Every one of those is a symptom of menopause also. So you can see why it might be difficult for a woman to discern whether she's experiencing hyperthyroidism or menopause if she has these symptoms. However, I would like to make one distinction. Being hot all the time is not the same thing as having hot flashes. The difference between the two is quite obvious, but you would be surprised at the numbers of women who think being hot all the time constitutes hot flashes. A hot flash is a momentary event. That's why it has the word flash in it. It lasts only a couple of minutes, and it's a symptom of menopause. Being hot all the time is a completely different thing. It has no flash. It's not momentary, and it's more consistent with hyper thyroidism. So do not make the mistake of thinking that because you tend to be hot all the time that you 
menopause. You don't. I mean, that you have menopause. If you have, if you're hot all the time, you're much more likely to have hyperthyroidism. But if you're having hot flashes, don't make the mistake of thinking it's your thyroid over functioning, because it's probably not. It's probably menopause. Okay, now the symptoms of hypothyroidism are heavy periods, insomnia, fatigue, forgetfulness, and cloudy thinking, depression, dry skin, dry hair, hair loss, joint pain, and weight gain. Every one of those is a symptom of menopause also. Once again, it can be very difficult for a woman to know which she has, hypothyroidism or menopause. Now, if you go way back in the podcast to the one on how to diagnose menopause, I taught you that you don't need to diagnose menopause any more than you need to diagnose puberty. I mean, you should expect menopause. It's going to happen. It's not a question of, is it going to happen? It's going to happen. And if you know what to look for, you'll know it's happening because it's very, very obvious. Your job is to recognize it when it comes along, which is what this, this menopause education is all about. But the problem is that because nobody talks about menopause, and because most women have their heads stuck in the sand with regard to menopause, and because most women fail to get an education on menopause, they don't recognize it when it happens, even when it hits them over the head like a ton of bricks. My goal with this education is to change all that. So you do not have to diagnose menopause. You do not get a certificate when you become postmenopausal. You do not have to prove to the world that you are postmenopausal, but you do have to diagnose thyroid disease. And fortunately, diagnosing thyroid disease is very, very easy. All it takes is a simple, simple blood test. And the name of the blood test is called thyroid function tests. Some people say TF. Tees, thyroid function tests. Thyroid function tests measure your levels of thyroid hormones. One of your thyroid hormones comes from your brain, and it's called thyroid stimulating hormone, abbreviated TSH. It comes from your brain. And two of your thyroid hormones come directly from your thyroid gland itself. They're called T3 and T4. <laughs> but a single blood test can measure all three of them. You only have to get stuck once. So if you discover that you do have thyroid disease, whether it's hyper or hypothyroidism, you will need to take thyroid hormones to correct the problem. And you will need to take them for the rest of your life. Okay? That's the way this works. Any hormone deficiency or hormone excess requires getting your hormones back to normal. Your doctor will determine the correct dosage of your thyroid hormone so that your thyroid returns to its normal level of function. And of course, that may take some adjustments just to get the right, perfectly right dosage. But there's another catch. Many things can change the proper dosage of your thyroid hormone medication. If you lose weight, your dosage may, needs may change. If you gain weight, your dosage needs may change. And if you take HRT, your dosage needs may change. You see, your thyroid is very, very sensitive. It responds to every little thing that happens to your body. It's always aware of everything. So you have to check your thyroid function test regularly to ensure that your dosage of thyroid medication is still correct. You know, when a woman who already has thyroid disease gets pregnant when she's younger, we check her thyroid function test every single month during her pregnancy. Why do we do that? Well, because as her estrogen and progesterone levels rise during the pregnancy, her thyroid medication needs change a lot. So it's really important to stay on top of her changing needs. Well, guess what? Menopause is no different. 
If you have thyroid disease before you enter menopause and you don't take HRT, you may need to still change your dosage of thyroid medications. And if you have thyroid disease before, medica before menopause and you do take HRT, you may also need to change your dosage of thyroid medications. Okay, what about if you develop thyroid disease after you become postmenopausal? It's no different than it is for pregnant women with thyroid disease. If you start taking HRT, you have to check your thyroid function tests and adjust your medications accordingly. If you stop taking HRT, you have to check your thyroid function tests and adjust your medications accordingly. If you change the dosage of your HRT, you have to check your thyroid function tests and adjust your medications accordingly. You might even have to adjust your thyroid medications if you merely change brands of HRT. The bottom line here is that your sex hormones and your thyroid hormones affect one another greatly. When you change the levels of one, you might need to adjust the levels of the other. And this one simple principle can save you a lot of confusion. Anything that changes one will require adjustments in the other. You know, this is very helpful, I'm sure, but if you have a thyroid problem yourself, don't assume that this little podcast tutorial has told you everything you need to know about your personal situation. Nothing I do is a do-it-yourself guide to anything. I provide you with a basic education. Nothing I give you in a podcast or a video or my book or anywhere is tailored to you personally except in a consultation. That's why I do consultations. It's the only way you get everything tailored to you. So don't ever assume that your situation is like someone else's. Because women are not robots. Your situation is not like anyone else's. So be sure you know that and be sure you don't make the mistake of thinking that, okay, if you know what I've told you here, then you're all set and ready to go. Um, and one other thing I'd like to talk about is that, you know, there is a difference in how you monitor or manage medication needs for your thyroid versus HRT. Because so many endocrine diseases, so many diseases that have to do with hormones require drawing hormone levels to see what your medication dosage needs to be. A lot of women assume that the very same is true for menopause. Well, think about it. When it comes to thyroid or insulin or any other hormone in your body other than estrogen, there's a normal range. We know where it should be because there is a range. Every lab has parameters where if you're between this and this, you're normal, and if you're not, you're abnormal. We know what normal is. How can anyone say what a normal estrogen level is? If postmenopause, by definition, means that your estrogen disappears and goes to zero. You know, I am shocked sometimes when women go, oh my God, I never thought of that. Well, the whole, I, the whole definition of menopause is that you lose your estrogen, it's gone, it's zero. So Mother Nature made it so it's zero. But to think that there is some arbitrary, quote, normal range for your estrogen levels as a like a blood test or a saliva test or urine test. That's just crazy. There's no such thing as a normal level. No one gets to make up a normal level. No one gets to, no one is mother nature. No one gets to do that. But guess what? Your own body talks to you. Go figure. Your own body talks to you. And if you listen to your own body, it's very easy to know what the right dosage is because you will feel perfect when you're on the right dosage and you will feel awful when you're not. <laughs> so I